Hello, hello! Welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to somebody that goes by Simron Simron. Thank you for your continued support. And we're going to dive into a little bit more about how narcissistic abusers don't learn from their mistakes. There's a couple of key points to get to with that. Cause it, <laughs> it all goes with the double mind and not being able to take, let's just say they don't want to take responsibility. They don't want to be held accountable. So it's all part of the ism mindset. But as always, let's recover some scripture here. Matthew 7, 1 through 3. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with that measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? All about recognizing the moot in our own eyes as we are in God's reality and spiritual awakening and learning God's wisdom and overcoming, you know, overcoming the trauma and healing, spiritual growth, all of that. So we've got to always remember, this is why you'll hear, you'll hear on this channel often about how we got to remember, because it's part of that compassion that God gave us. We have to remember that we too were once asleep. So, understanding that helps for those of you who are noticing how people around you are still sleeping and that they're not seeing what you're seeing. When you understand that and you remember, well, we were once there too. To an extent, although God chosen always, like I've said before, always had that sense that there's more out there than meets the eye. And we also know, we kind of always knew that if we were engaging in a particular behavior and we saw someone else doing it, we weren't going to, we you don't judge because... If you're, but see, this is what the narcissistic abusers do. And remember, they do it through those accusations. That's right. When they accuse us of doing the things that they're doing, that's not just projection. That's also trying to shift the blame somewhere else. But they don't want to take accountability. So, for example, if, if a narcissistic abuser ever accuses you of stalking someone that tells you right there they're the one who was stalking whoever it is they accused you of stalking that's how they tell on themselves that's how that's like that's why we say that an accusation that comes out of the mouth of a narcissistic abuser is a confession as to what they're doing and they know that it's wrong they know that it's a mistake but don't want to acknowledge it. They don't want to recognize the moot in their own eyes. They can't handle that. It's just a. It's part of that is that high pride. Okay, remember that high mindedness that they have. They don't want. They they won't admit. Cause they know if they do that, then somebody's gonna hold them accountable. They don't want to be held accountable for the bad behavior, for doing things like stalking they know they should not be doing because there are laws against that. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a, oh yeah, I know, that, that could be a double-edged sword right there. Because, <laughs> I mean, getting proof of that, it is a challenge. But it's not impossible. So if any of you are experiencing the stalking and I know many have re referred to the Hoovers as being a form of stalking and in a way it is but if it's not causing any imminent danger or harm to it to you then it, that's where you got to have that discernment you know because we learned that a lot of those Hoovers are 
just head games, trying to see if we'll take the bait, and, and that kind of stuff, for the most part. But if it come, becomes an excess, then it can turn into stalking. This is why we say, we don't, if you can go 100% no contact, that's the best way to do it. I know, for those with limited contact, at least on the soul level, definitely. So, when they do the excessive hoovering, you want to, here's your tip, you'll want to save the illustrated email, text, whatever documentation you can gather if it becomes an excess, okay? That way, you'll have documentation to take to law enforcement if you need to. And then they will guide you from there. Just like many of us who have had to get uh, re uh, restraining orders, protective orders, whatever, on some past narcissistic abuse, or they will guide us, you know, they guide you through the steps. But yes, narcissistic abusers, here's the number one reason why they do not learn from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't believe they made any. It's all part of that double mind, again, because it's like, we now know that the narcissistic abusers know what they're doing is wrong, but yet refuse to accept that it's a mistake. Again, because they don't want to take accountability for it. They don't even, they, it, it's like, that's how they deceive themselves also. Because remember, they're deceit. So in their mind, they craft up some story where they pick a target out to try and shift blame and project their own mistakes onto others. And it's also because they do have, it's, they, they, have, they don't know how to process the guilt and shame. So, because in order to process guilt and shame properly, A, you've got to have a conscience. <laughs> I mean, that's the big one right there. You've got to have a conscience. And then also, with a conscience, you've got to have the wherewithal to understand, oops, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like when I come out with the I stand corrected when God corrects me, <laughs> okay? I have no problem with that because I want y'all to know that God chosen to always learn from their mistakes. Many of us growing up, you know, through, we, we were, I would say, not, you know, the world might think it wasn't a proper discipline, but it worked. Because we didn't do it again, right? If we broke a household rule. <laughs> yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> oh, boy. Many different ways. So, we learned our lesson because of proper discipline. So, that brings us to point number two. About why the narcissistic abusers don't learn from their mistake. It's because they don't get discipline. See, that discipline is holding them accountable. There you go. There's the connection. Being properly disciplined. You know, discipline in and of itself, you know, y'all, they use the abuse as discipline. Yeah, they think that that, you know, ugh, it's crazy making. But... They don't want to have that turned back on them. Stop and think about that. They don't want to have it turned back around on them. Just like what Je when Jesus said, judge not or you'll be, you'll be judged. So it's the, it's the irony with this narcissism. The narcissistic abusers, they're the ones that go around judging, but yet they don't want, they don't want to be held accountable. They don't want to be disciplined. Because they will interpret that as being judgmental when it's not. It's like if we pointed out their bad behavior, the abuse, and they think that that is judging. No, it's calling it as it is. Calling them out, right? And we learn to stop doing that, like I said, <laughs> in, the, in the live. Okay, over there, you can find that one. Where we start, we start out with the uh, obsession with why the target not smiling anymore, and then there's a lot of good stuff in there. 
And quick reminder, everyone. CHA Academy is now open for enrollment. Just to let you know the links. I want you all to remember that in the video description, you'll find all the important links to some of the stuff that we are putting out there to make available for you all. Along with the website, the Patreon channel, all of that that we've got going for you all. To continue healing and spiritually growing. And so CHA Academy, that'll help you level up in your healing and spiritual growth. Absolutely. So, by not taking accountability for their own action, they're going to continue to make the same mistakes over and over. It's, it's just like how they continue that, psych, that, that cycle of abuse over and over, expecting different results. So, that's, that's the big one right there, too. It's like they don't, they don't, they don't think. It's, here's how the double mind works for a narcissistic abuser. Let me put this, to help put this in better perspective. They think, okay, they don't think that they made a mistake. But yet, at the same time, the double mind, they know what they did is wrong. I'm going to let that sink in. To help y'all understand what, because it, just a deeper understanding of what God means by that. Having that double mind. It's like they don't think they made a mistake. Again, because they think they're perfect. They think that... <laughs> they do. In their mind, they think they're perfect. So, they don't think they make mistakes. Yet, at the same time, know what they did was wrong. That's why, they ha that's why we are able to see their guilt and shame upon their shoulders. They walk around, you, you, you kind of sense it. That's, it's a spiritual thing. You can, kind of, you can see how they're, they're full of shame and guilt. Again, because they don't know how to process it. And because they don't know how to process it, they will misinterpret a lot of things. And they do it deliberately. That's all part of how they keep their targets and other people confused. Not just through the actions not matching words. It's through... Well, through the abuse, obviously, and then, so, because they can't properly digest or process that, get, that, that shame and guilt because of a lack of conscience. And a lot of things, you all, conscious is, is directly related to awareness. So, we, t we hear a lot of people talk about how narcissistic abusers are not self-aware. What we mean by that? If they don't know who they are in Christ, like they are, they're they are aware that they're on this planet, and they know that what they're doing is wrong. Again, they know the how, but they don't know the why. They don't understand. They they have no awareness of the spiritual realm. They have no awareness. You can't have awareness unless your spiritual body is raised. So. It would make it makes sense that the narcissistic abusers lack a sense of self awareness. They don't know who they are in Christ. Because, again, in order to know who you are in Christ, you've got to be with Him, right? You've got to have Him in the heart. Otherwise, you aren't, they're, they're not going to, and they can't get in their purpose. But with that, we cannot get in our purpose without Jesus. That's the bottom line right there. And so that's the thing we learn. And that's a big part of all that inner work so that Jesus can help us put away those childish things. Because yes, we all got duped into engaging in some, but not all, for the most part. Okay, just little things here and there that we were conditioned to think were actually normal. But see, when you get God's reality, we realize that's not normal. <laughs> and again, we are the ones who get to define normal regarding our world, our lives, our reality. We co-create our reality in God's reality. You hear me, you hear me say that a lot. Cause I want that to sink in. Because I know that once that sinks in, that'll help a lot of you all get in your purpose as well. You'll figure it out. That's just another little tip right there. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> y'all, as a reminder, when you watch these videos, it's always a good idea to have yourself a so somewhere, some way to take notes because you never know.
when the Holy Spirit going to spit something out. <laughs> okay? Remember, the Holy Spirit grants us utterance to speak boldly as we ought to speak. And what that means is with conviction. So when you know, here's another tip for you all. Yeah, now that we've got the understanding of the narcissistic abuser, they don't learn from their mistake for a number of reasons. This tip for you all, when the, you know, boldly means speak with conviction. So, let's say some of you all are toying, I guess if you will, with the idea of maybe writing a book or some other project. Think about what you know. I know, we, we don't know at all. There's no way we can. But the specific skill set that God put in you as you're going through that list we talked about in that live of all your talents and your skill and do you with doing that inner work and you will figure out what your specialty is what your niche is and then you will see okay so there's others in the same niche so to speak and then you will want to kind of narrow it down go okay well what's going to set you apart because whatever your whatever your specialty is your niche is going to be your passion also. That's your purpose. So that concludes this one. As always, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me for additional information, insight, and other good stuff. You can check out these videos right here. Sending love and light to all fellow warriors. Thank you for watching and for your support. Until next time, let's show some gratitude to the Heavenly Father. And you keep being you. In Jesus' name, amen.